What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And fellas, it is that time yet again. The New Orleans Saints are traveling far away from the Dome to face a familiar opponent in the Carolina Panthers. Panthers and Saints are completely different now than they were in years past. We're not watching Ted Ginn Jr. in a Saints uniform having a fat-ass touchdown against the Panthers in the wild card game. We're not watching Andy Dalton. We're not watching Sam Darnold. Instead, we have Derek Carr and Bryce Young searching to bring their teams to victory. It is week two, though, and with that being said, despite winning their last five season openers, the New Orleans Saints have not went 2-0 since 2013. Will this be the week that we finally fucking snap the week two curse? Let me know. All right, fellas, let me just go ahead and slip this in here real quick before the review officially starts. Now, I don't usually do this, so forgive me, but we're super close to this fucking milestone, and we're going to get it, all right, because you guys are the best. We are at 10,994 subscribers. I just need six of you. I just need six of you guys to subscribe, and then we'll be at that fat-ass 11,000 subscriber milestone. I appreciate you guys supporting every step of the way even though I just started this channel as a way for me to talk about football without annoying the fuck out of my family. So <laughs> I appreciate you guys subscribing. I'm going to shut up. Saints vs. Panthers preview. Who's going to win? Let me know in the comment section. Let's get into the video. Roll the intro. I'll shut the fuck up now. Let's go. Thank you. 11,000. Thank you, guys. Bye. Saints and Carolina Panthers are both teams that didn't really live up to their fans expectations in their week one bouts. Carolina fell extremely flat with a 24 to 10 loss against our division rivals, the Atlanta Falcons, in a game headlined by Bryce Young's first and second career interceptions. They looked bad. They looked extremely awful on both sides of the ball and looked simply outclassed by the Falcons which is kind of insane to me judging by that they're really both in very similar situations as far as their franchises go. They lost the turnover battle 0-3 to Atlanta, and when that happens, shit never really goes right. The Saints had a different story to tell. They were supposed to be a high-flying, high-octane offense that went out there and looked like an engine with no oil in it. Despite that, they won the turnover battle, three and two and still only managed to squeak out a 16 to 15 victory luckily our defense was locked the fuck in or we would have lost that game needless to say both teams are going to be in the hunt for impressive comebacks over week ones that they don't really think was up to standard the saints have a few things going for them this week the first thing is that chris olave michael thomas and rashid shaheed are up against a panthers secondary who are without their best defensive back in jc horn he is the star of that defense, and he is not out there, other than Brian Burns. After we've seen these receivers play last week, it's hard to imagine the Panthers' secondary keep them in check without J.C. Horn out there. They didn't have very stiff competition last week in Desmond Ritter, who only threw the ball 18 times, but he did manage to complete 15 out of 18 attempts, picking up 115 yards and a passing touchdown in the process with a 111 quarterback rating. Falcons were able to run the ball 26 times and averaged five yards per carry and picked up two touchdowns as well. Mix the fact that the Panthers turned the ball over three times with a defense that was gasping for big plays, it spells trouble for the Panthers against a veteran quarterback like Derek Carr, who, unlike Desmond Ritter, can make those plays. For me, and for the New Orleans Saints, in my opinion, this game depends a lot on how our offensive line plays. Derek Carr was pressured on 51.6% of his dropbacks in week one, getting sacked four times in the process. That cannot happen again. It simply can't. With Brian Burns out there on the prowl, this offensive line needs to do an entire fucking 180 or the week two curse will continue. Yes, our receivers played great last week with 60 yards a pop. And yes, our defense did have three interceptions and four sacks. But if we can't put points on the board, 
because Derek Carr is getting turned into a fine paste on behalf of Trevor Penning. It's going to be another struggle for the New Orleans Saints against a Carolina Panthers team that, while they didn't perform great last week, they are still feisty. Even though most of the Carolina Panthers organization shot itself in the foot last Sunday, the one constant they had was that defensive line. Brian Burns had a sack and a half, and the team notched four total. If we are going to win, we have to protect Derek Carr. Another thing to look for is that run defense for the Carolina Panthers. They kind of got gashed by Atlanta, allowing 130 rushing yards on 26 attempts with 5.0 yards per carry average and allowing two touchdowns as well. The Saints run game was abysmal last week, but this could be a big game for Jamal Williams if the offensive line takes its head out of its ass. There are a lot of ways this game can go, seriously. The New Orleans Saints are going to be playing a team that they're familiar with playing, but with a lot of new moving parts and new components added into the mix. I don't think that the Carolina Panthers are better than the New Orleans Saints by any means. I don't think Bryce Young is going to be able to thrive against a defense as good as New Orleans. Marshawn Lattimore is playing amazing to start the season. Amante Taylor is also locking up as well. You take Paulson Adebo, who had an interception last week, Marcus May as well. There are so many pieces in the secondary that can give Bryce Young a lot of trouble. Our linebackers have been fantastic as well. Demario Davis is having another great season. Carl Granderson is absolutely playing out of his mind. Cameron Jordan is Cameron Jordan as always. And Brian Brzee is playing good as well. So it's hard for me to say that the New Orleans Saints are not going to have success against the Carolina Panthers offense and shutting them down. I also think Derek Carr will be taking advantage of the fact that their best corner is not out there. And with big name receivers like Michael Thomas and Chris Olave and sprinkle in some Rashid Shahid, that spells a lot of trouble for this Carolina Panthers secondary. I also think Jamal Williams will have a better game than he did last week, mainly because the adjustments that Dennis Allen is hopefully making for our offensive line. Hopefully, there's going to be more passion and more fire there, and we're going to see results of that this week. I think the New Orleans Saints are going to come away with a victory in this one. There just really aren't many reasons for me to believe that Carolina is going to win this game, other than the fact that they're at home, and in this stage of the game, it doesn't really matter. The disparity between the two teams, in my opinion, is quite large, and I think the Saints got this one in the bag. Now, I don't want to jinx, so... We're still going to lose, but I have the Saints winning this game 26 to 20. Monday Night Football doubleheader. I'm going to be at work during it, but trust me, I swear to God, I will find a way to watch this shit and I will bring you guys the most crispy post game interview as or post game recap whenever the game is over, whether that be in the night or in the morning. You guys will be still getting that regardless. So, yeah, let me know what you fellas think about this game down in the comment section below. Do you think Bryce Young will shock the world and beat the shit out of us? Or do you think the Saints' defense will give him too much trouble and our offense takes advantage of the injuries that the Panthers do have? Let me know down in the comment section. I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say. And I appreciate you boys stopping in and watching this video. See you guys in the next one. Adios. Zero gravity falling Never ever sleep or stay drunk Like I'm jumping on a trampoline